thank you. Um, one of the biggest decisions I had to make today was what to wear. Uh, this is the first time I've, I've had the, the opportunity and good fortune to speak at an event like this. And I thought, well, maybe you just go with the, the dark suit and just play it safe. And, you know, the family and parents are going to be dressed well. And, and I thought, you know, I'm in sports and entertainment. Maybe I'll spice it up a little bit today. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to pull out that red satin gown I have. <laughs> So maybe during the national anthem, I'll really belt it out. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to play close to the best for the rest of the morning, if that's okay. Um, Dean Scott, faculty, parents, families, class of 2014, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, as mentioned, I've had the good fortune to speak on many occasions to Western students, particularly at the law school, but today, of course, is above all others. I was going to say it was not a long time ago that I was sitting right where you are, but it was a long time ago, 1993 to be exact. But despite that, I remember it well, and I remember it being a very happy day. Happy to have successfully reached the finish line, to look back and reflect on all the great things that happened over the last three years. And, let's be honest, happy to leave some of them behind like eating craft dinner while reading the umpteenth case of who cares as plaintiff against whatever as defendant. <laughs> Today is a day to celebrate not only what you've accomplished, perhaps with a massive sense of relief, but also what lies ahead for each of you. As I thought back to 1993 and everything that followed, I found myself thinking, I wish someone had told me that back then. So today I will try to do that. I'm hoping that some of it will help you as you set your sights on the road ahead. I'd like to begin by saying, don't underestimate the power of what you've achieved. On the negative side, you are now hated by the population at large. <laughs> That's okay, it rarely gets expressed in random acts of violence. Um, but I would still recommend against personalized license plates like Law Guy or LLB MVP. <laughs> just not cool, and some of you will get those, I guarantee you. Also, prepare your response for the inevitable phone call from your cousin Larry, whose neighbor just got a DUI, needs a new will, or just got fired. After several of these calls over the years, I simply say I really wasn't paying attention when they taught us that in law school. <laughs> Which I don't feel that bad about, because technically I'm not lying. <laughs> On the positive side, you've now earned a lifetime of professional respect. Respect that cuts across geography and culture and age and gender and industry. And you are worthy of it. As you get into more challenging and competitive situations, don't ever forget that. You have already made the positive first impression. Despite that, I recall early on in my career often feeling like an imposter and that I was in over my head. And later on, I learned that many of my classmates had experienced the same thing. In my first year of practice, I found myself in a difficult spot. At the end of my article in year, the managing partner called each of the students in succession into his office to tell us if we'd made the cut to be hired back. When my turn came, I sat in his office and he said, I have some good news and I have some bad news. Now, I article with a pretty stellar group that year. So I was only expecting bad news, so the fact that there was good news was a bit of a silver lining. And he said, the good news is that we would like to hire you back. Cue elation. <laughs> the bad news is that you have to work in Mr. X's group. Cue despair. <laughs> Mr. X was a preeminent senior lawyer in the firm who was able to dedicate all this time to the practice of law mainly because he wasn't often burdened by social graces, diplomacy, or kindness. <laughs> it's all coming back. Um, as the implications of the deal set in, I decided to take the burden in hand and accept the job. 
It wouldn't be that bad. I've been hired to report to a really good junior lawyer who in turn reported to Mr. X, so I had a buffer and everything would be fine. During bar ads, I got a call that the junior lawyer, aka the buffer, was leaving the firm with no plans to replace him. I was now on a direct collision course with Mr. X. And collide, I did. At the lowest point of the period, Mr. X called me in his office. And after an exceptionally compelling and effective demotivational speech, <laughs> he paused, looked me in the eye, and said, I seriously question your legal abilities. <laughs> While I was floored, my confidence was rocked. It confirmed my deepest suspicions that I was an imposter destined for much lesser things. Imagine that you get the same speech nine months from today. Well, in situations like that, it's fight or flight. I chose flight. <laughs> to another firm, and then I fought. I fought to prove Mr. X wrong, and every Mr. X that followed, and there were a few along the way. When you find yourself in a situation where you feel you're in over your head, that you can't measure up, that you're an imposter, trust me, you're not. You're exactly where you should be, and with focus, hard work, and fight, you will succeed. Some of your greatest achievements will come after a significant period of uncertainty and perseverance. I've often said your career can be like walking through a long, muddy field in rubber boots. You'll get to the other side, but the boots will come off now and again. It makes me think of another experience this time with the Ironman triathlon. For those of you who don't know about the Ironman, it's an event that involves a 4-kilometer swim, a 180-kilometer bike, and then a 42-kilometer marathon. I completed the Ironman in 2006 in 12 and a half hours, and it was grueling. And it will last as one of my proudest moments and one of my very favorite memories. After a year of training, 5 a.m. runs, endless laps in the pool, hours riding my bike, injuries, exhaustion, all done during my first year in the CFL, which was a tumultuous one, it came down to one moment of truth when it almost all went out the window. I recall being on a seven-hour bike ride on the race course in Lake Placid, New York in early um, 2006, July 2006, two weeks before the race, when the, the ride was all about proving to myself that I had it in me to finish the job on race day. It was cold and it was raining, back rain, with a huge headwind on the back half of the route, which was a long and punishing uphill climb. There came a moment when I was so tired and so much pain and so much doubt that, after screaming the most vile swear words you can imagine for about 20 minutes, I literally got off my bike, held it over my head, and I was ready to throw it off the cliff beside me. But I didn't. I thought to myself, I've put in all the hard work. I belong here, and I'm not going to let this get the best of me. That and my bike was pretty expensive, and I had no way to get back. <laughs> but I clenched my teeth and I got through it. Because of that, I had a fantastic day two weeks later. I often think of that when I'm in work situations when I feel out of my league, facing impossible odds with uncertainty and doubt. And you will be in these situations. Keep your head down. Have confidence in yourself. You all have the capacity to be all-stars, believe me. Push through, work hard, test your potential. Maybe you don't scream the most foul swear words you know for 20 minutes in your office. But you may not see clearly at the time, but you will get to where you want to go. With this in mind, be bold and confident and take advantage of your opportunities. Don't be afraid to reach. Don't be afraid to try new and different paths. Time is on your side. Of all the things I can say to you today, this is perhaps the one I would stress the most. You have time. To try new things, to make mistakes, to reinvent, so take your time. It's a much longer runway than you're able to perceive right now. Allow it to develop. Allow yourself to stumble. It's okay. You'll still get there. Just keep in mind, whatever you do, keep moving forward, even if it's just a little bit. Learn something. Develop something in yourself. Fill your toolkit with as many different and diverse things as you can, and you will have many and many interesting <coughs> options to apply them many of which you don't even know about yet. And another thing, I'm addressing you today as law graduates, not necessarily as lawyers in the traditional sense. 
There's a world of opportunity in front of you. Don't be afraid to explore it in your own way. <coughs> your degree gives you that flexibility. With respect, I don't think law schools generally do a good job of letting you know just how powerful and flexible a law degree is. Instead, it's the standard issue t-shirt, keep calm and join a Bay Street firm. <laughs> Working for a law firm is a great option, but by no means the only one. I often say that law school taught me how to think, how to be disciplined, analytical, measured, and methodical. And what followed in my career taught me what to think about, how to build relationships, develop a strategy, and be innovative and creative in bringing a vision to life. I left a promising Bay Street career when I was 28 to return to business school on my own dime. Two years later, I backpacked on my own through Asia and Australia, eventually living in Sydney for a year and a half. I then spent a few years in business consulting, returning to the very beginning of the learning curve again. <clears throat> then came a few years in the beer industry, learning how a big, iconic Canadian company actually works day to day. When I decided to take a job with CFL eight years ago, a lot of my friends thought it was crazy. They saw a brand that was a little battered, it had lost some franchises, it had a reputation for difficult owners, it was a risky move. I, on the other hand, chose to see an opportunity. I thought I could make an impact. I was confident I could contribute to a turnaround, frankly, in large part because of the foundation provided by my law degree. Major sports properties like Manchester United and even MLSE right here at home were thinking about sports differently and defining their businesses and opportunities more broadly and challenging themselves to think bigger, much bigger. And I thought, if I can take that and apply it to the CFL to challenge the accepted way of doing things, I can make a big difference. And I was right. In today's CFL, we are proud of our traditions, but we're not stuck in the past. We are modernizing. We have a new stadium open in Winnipeg last year. Pro football returns to Ottawa this year with a beautiful new stadium in development of Lansdowne Park. Another new stadium, Tim, Tim Hortons Field, opens in Hamilton this year. And yet another opens in Saskatchewan in 2017. We have a strong long-term partnership with TSN. And now, as of last Friday, thankfully, a strong labor agreement with our players. <laughs> Dusty dark circles under the eyes. <laughs> the Grey Cup is the single, largest single-day sporting event in Canada. Each year brings millions of Canadians together from coast to coast to coast. When I reflect back on my last eight years with the CFL, I'm very proud of being part of an incredible period of positive change, a renaissance even. So ignore the cynics and naysayers. Take risks, especially early on in your career. And on your journey, expand your definition of success to include things other than money. Don't get me wrong, money is important, but you will make enough money, trust me. The other things are important. And as you move forward in your career, have the money I told you you would, these other things will become increasingly important, even more important than your money. For every one of the parents in the room, I think you'll agree that seeing your kid up on stage today checks one of the boxes on your short list. And that's C-H-E-C-K, not C-H-E-Q-U-E. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure that you pursue your other interests with equal tenacity. Time for the other people in your life. Personal goals. Fun. Make decisions that take care of the side of the equation. And start now. In this regard, the legendary Heisenberg, a.k.a. Walter White, provides a good example. He said, I did it for me. I liked it. I was good at it. And I was alive. <laughs> now, we don't recommend that you take Walter's particular path. <laughs> but in your career, do something that has meaning to you. This brings me to a story that I've told some of you before and something that happened to me at the 2008 Great Cup in Montreal. Um, each year the commissioner hosts um, a brunch, a pre-game for dignitaries and uh, sponsors and, and partners and the, the Prime Minister usually attends and the Governor General and it's, it's quite a big affair. And after the event in Montreal we gave all the guests a mini football to take with them. So that's a souvenir. I grabbed a few to give away. Um, to some people outside of the event, and, and I was walking along the street, 
uh, and I saw a little boy, he was like eight, ten years old, and he had an Alice jersey on, and um, he was walking with his family. So I went up and I knelt down and I gave him the football. And he had his eyes just lit up and smile. It was the greatest thing ever. He thanked me and said, You're welcome to enjoy the game. And I started walking away and um, I heard his mom yell from behind, Thank you. And, and I turned around and she was running up to me and it was just her and I together. And she said, um, Thank you for what you did. And I said, Well, it's my pleasure to enjoy the game. And she said, no, um, thank you. She said, my son has cancer. And he just finished uh, chemotherapy. And as they went into chemotherapy, they said, it's going to be tough. And if you get through this, and if you're brave, and you're strong, you can have anything you want. And he said, I want to go with a great cup. And that was that great cup. And it was at that moment I knew what I do for a living matters. I know I'm not saving the rainforest, I'm certainly not curing disease, but I'm contributing to something that brought that family and brings all families together, brings communities together, even brings the country together. Sports matter, and the CFL matters. And you need to find what matters to you. What will sustain you in good times and lift you in bad times is the belief deep inside that what you do matters to you and the people you care about. In closing, I'd simply like to say that many, uh, this may have been the longest locker room speech ever given, <laughs> but I hope something will stick with you along the way. I'm genuinely happy for you. I'm genuinely excited for you. Congratulations again on a remarkable achievement. I wish you all the luck in the world for an interesting, successful, rewarding career. Thank you.